I'll give her a second. She wanted to share something this morning, so. That's okay if you can't find it. Maybe we will later. That's no problem. Yeah, just let me know later. Maybe we'll do it after the sermon. Praise the Lord. How many have ever... um, How many have ever been through a period of your life where you um, feel like, man, everything, everything in my life has just been consumed, and man, everything in my life right now is being shaken, and everything in my life right now uh, just seems like is in, in, in turmoil, and all I have left is my faith. How many have ever been there? Man, that's all I've got left. God, what do you want from me? Everything has been taken from me. Everything has been, feels like it's been destroyed, and all I have left is my faith. How many have ever truly been there? And you're holding on with everything, and I just want you to know today that God sees that faith, and the message this morning is precious faith. That thing that you're holding on to through everything. In fact, David said, I've been through the fire, I've been through the water, and I've been tried, and here I am with my faith. And God sees that faith. God sees that you've been, everything that you've been through, and He sees that faith, and He sees that you're still holding on. He sees that you're still not letting go. And this morning, God wants to explain directly to you what that is. God wants to explain to you what that process is because there's something there. And what that is that you're holding on to, when you, when you say to yourself, how many have ever said to yourself, no matter what I go through, no matter what happens, I will not let go of God? How many have ever done that? That thing that you're holding on to, that I will not let go of God, that is something That is a specific thing in the Bible. And God wants to reveal to you what that thing is that will not let you let go of God. And God's very specific what it is. Let's turn to uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 7. First Peter chapter 1, verse 7. This is some very important things that God wants you to understand about life and about Him and about yourself. And it's very important. God wouldn't put it out here so many times in the Bible if He didn't want us to understand what He wants us to... um, If He didn't want us to have this wisdom, He wouldn't put it in the Bible so much. And not having this wisdom will make it very difficult to go through this. I wrestled with two titles here. Title of my paper is Refiner's Fire. But really, it's not about the fire. And it's not even about the refiner. It's really about the precious faith. So that's a better sermon here because it's not about those other things. It's about what the, God is trying to accomplish inside of us. 1 Peter 1 7 says, from the King James Version, it says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory in the appearing of Jesus Christ. From a paraphrase it says, same verse, I know how great this makes you feel, even though you have put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved to be pure. Genuine faith put through the suffering comes out to be genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith, not your gold, which God will have on display as evidence of his victory. You see, God is speaking about your faith as being precious, more precious than gold, and he's actually comparing it to how gold is made. He begins this theology of how gold 
is representative of faith. And the way that gold is purified is similar to the way that faith is purified within us. So let's follow this. Let me give you another um, version of that verse, Amplified Bible. So the genuineness of your faith, which is more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though gold is tested and purified by fire, um, your faith may be found to result in your praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. NIV, to prove the genuineness of your faith and that it is worth more than gold, which perisheth, even though it's refined by fire. Even though, fire, even though gold goes through this great process, still it perishes. Compared to your faith going through a similar process, which your faith does not perish. So it's try, he's trying to make us understand that the faith that's within you is more valuable than at that time the most valuable thing on earth was gold. And gold, there was great amount of effort to refine the gold and, and put it in its purest form. And what he's saying is that your faith, which is much more valuable, is going to go through a process that's similar to what gold goes through. This is your faith. Let me go on. Just to show you it's not an isolated scripture. Malachi 3.3 3, And he shall sit, he is God, shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he that shall purify the sons of Levi, he will purge them like gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. This is a prophecy. He's going to purify his servants the same way that gold and silver is purified. And when they are purified, they will offer sacrifices to their God. Do you see how he tied together gold, your faith, and the, the, the um, quality of your gift to him? Do you see that? When they're purified like gold and silver... They will offer a gift to me that is priceless, is what he's saying here. 1 Corinthians three twelve to 15, it says, Now if anybody builds a foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each person's work will become manifest. For the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what so sort of work each person has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved as through fire, but only through fire. Do you see this refining language here? That our work, everything else in our life, there are periods of time, and this is what we're getting into here. There's a process where we live on planet Earth and we will go through circumstances, we will go through situations, and that's, those situations, experiences, and circumstances will be like fire. And they will burn up a lot of things in our life, but if our faith is genuine, it won't burn up. If it's not genuine, it will be tested by fire and it will burn up. But if it's genuine a process is beginning to occur with this precious thing called faith. It's beginning to change its form. It's beginning to change its purity. It's beginning to change its usefulness and its quality before God. Remember, he said, you will offer sacrifices before me after it's been tried in fire. So something about this walk that when we go through these experiences, and how many know it, it, it pours upon the righteous and the unrighteous? But when it pours upon the righteous, something that's pure inside of us, something that is priceless inside of us, begins to be pushed forward and purified. And the quality of it becomes something that God really desires this. He's the refiner. He really desires the quality of this thing that's within us. Let me go on. Isaiah 40, or Zechariah 13, 9. 
I will put a third of them into the fire, and I will refine them as one refined silver and test them as gold is tested. They will call upon my name, and I will answer them, and I will say, you are my people, and they will say, the Lord is my God. You see it again? I mean, it's, if it's in one place, you can kind of isolate and say, well, maybe he didn't mean it. But when he continually keeps saying that this refining by fire and standing very firm in your faith is something that is pleasing to God, we got to understand what is he doing. And when we're in the middle of it, do we recognize it? And when we're in the middle of it, do we appreciate it? In the middle of it, do we not abandon him? Think about it. Goes again. Isaiah 48:10. Behold, I have refined you, but not like silver. I have tried you in a furnace of affliction. Malachi. I've already read that one. Psalm 66. This is David. For you, O God, have tested me. You have tried us as silver is tried. You have brought us into a net. You laid a crushing burden on our back. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and we went through water. Yet you have brought us to a place of abundance. Do you hear the patience in his voice? This was a man that lived in a cave for a couple, several years, okay, running from enemies that he thought for sure were going to kill him. All right. This is a man that trusted God through everything, and yeah, God brought him into abundance. Okay, that's an understatement, really. All right. But you see, God tested him, tested his faith, tested to see if he would give up on his God, to test him to see if he would stop believing. And you say, well, man, I'm not doing a whole lot for God right now. I'm going through such a difficult, hard time. How many have ever been there? And you say, man, I'm not doing everything I want to do for God. I feel like I'm hemmed in. I don't feel like I can do anything for God right now. But you know what? I will not let go of my God. I'm in this house this morning because I still trust my God. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Give him a hand. Give the Lord a hand. And what God sent me to tell you this morning is, you're not doing anything for God, right? You're not winning, you're not the next John Wesley at this moment, right? You're not famous for what you're doing for the Lord, but let me tell you something this morning. That faith that is inside of your heart is more precious to God than anything you could ever do. That faith that's inside of you, God beholds it and God looks at it. Have you ever looked at something that was beautiful and it was golden and you ever went by a jewelry shop and thought, wow, you know, there's thousands of dollars in that case. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and it's all right there and the sun is shining on it right. They polished it just right. That's what you look like this morning. Your faith is being trusted. Your faith is being pushed. The world is, is, is beaten all around you. You've got every reason to give up. You've got every reason to stop. You've got every reason to be discouraged. But still inside of you, you're saying the same thing. Lord, I will never leave you. Lord, I will never give up on you. You are my Lord. You are my God. And God is saying that is precious to him. He doesn't say it about almost anything in the Bible. But he says that is precious to me. And he said, it's like gold and it's like silver, the most valuable thing on earth. And he's telling you this morning, you are precious to God. You're valuable to God. God's not looking at you saying, do something for me. God's just saying, hold on, I've got a plan, I've got a purpose, I'm doing something in your life. And you need to know it this morning. Jeremiah 9, 7 says, Therefore, says the Lord of hosts, behold, I will refine them, I will test them. For what else I can do, because, for what else can I do because they are my people? Do you understand? God is saying there's no other way that you can be what I want you to be except for this. What else can I do, he said. This is the only 
way that God can do it. <clears throat> there was a group of women that were in a Bible study. And they were studying Malachi 3.3, the one I just read. He shall sit as a refiner, purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer the Lord an offering of righteousness. And as they were studying that scripture, one of the women just became very curious about what that meant. They were all discussing among themselves, what does that mean? I will purify you like they purify gold and silver. And they were very curious. So one of the women said, I know a silversmith. I'm going to go watch him. Now remember, my text this morning was, which one it was? Oh, Malachi 3.3. 3, he shall sit as a refiner of silver. So he is the refiner he is the silversmith so when she goes into the shop and volunteers to watch him do his work she literally is almost like watching God spiritually when she watches the silversmith so she goes in she begins to watch him and she said said she went to the silversmith and made an appointment to watch him at work. She didn't mention anything about the reason for her interest in silver beyond the fact that she was curious about the process of refining silver and gold. As she watched the silversmith, he held a piece of silver over the fire and let it heat up. He explained that in refining silver, you need to hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flames are the hottest to burn away every impurity. I want you to see this this morning. What is the goal of the silversmith? He, he has to make the gold and the silver pure because it's extremely, extremely valuable. But in its current form, it's not any good. In its current form, it's not able to be what it was supposed to be. So he's watching it very intently, and he knows without a doubt. Do you know how much work has went into this piece of gold to get to the silversmith? He knows in his hand he holds something that is very valuable and cannot be lost. The most valuable thing on earth, and his eyes are intently watching it as he puts it in the middle of the fire. Now remember, your God is a silversmith. And here you are. And he's watching very close, very intently, and he puts it over the hottest part of the flame. Now, how many have ever been there? I'm not, I don't mean skewered over a campfire. Okay. So, no, I've never been there. How many have ever spiritually been to a place where you're like, man, God does not even care about me? God does not love me. If a loving God, and here comes the theology, if a loving God really loved me, he's got all the money in the world, why does he not help me? Why can he not write a check, have somebody give it to me, and this pain that I'm going through be over? Why, if God has control of the whole world, why is this happening to me? Why is that happening to me And the gold that is precious, the silver that is precious, begins to speak to the silversmith. And he has them over the flame. And I can almost feel the flames this morning. <laughs> As it gets closer to noon. But he has them over the flame. And he knows how valuable you are. He knows how valuable you are this morning. But he's watching it. He knows what he's doing. He knows what his goal is. His goal is to remove impurities. He said, well, my faith is not impure at all. Do you realize there may not be any other way to remove impurities from your faith than that? How else would you lose all the confidence you have in yourself 
You say, well, that's not an impurity. I thought you were talking about lying and stealing and cheating. No, he wants to remove impurities from faith. He wants to take away everything else we stand on that is not faith. Every confidence we have in ourselves, every confidence we have in people, every confidence we have in our logic, every confidence we have in our intellect. And I know nobody here is like this, but so we want to understand. We want to be logical. We want to be intellectual. And God says, that is not faith. Your faith is impure. Now, how in the world would God remove impurities from our faith? You've got to go through something. You've got to go through trials. You've got to go through circumstances. Sometimes a business will fail. Sometimes a relationship will fail. Sometimes you'll be crying out, Dear God, help me. I've got no other help, God. There's nothing else that can help me, God. All I have is my faith. But I thought your faith was supposed to be the greatest thing you had. When your faith is all that you have left, recognize that God is doing something with your faith. God is changing the composition. You're, you're like this chunk of ore that I'm going to talk about in a minute. It's a raw piece of stone that has gold in it. And God is doing something with your faith and he's trying to extract the most pure thing that you have. When the day comes, when judgment comes, fire is going to fall upon this earth and it's going to burn up everything. And you know what will be left? Gold. That faith that's within us is what will be left. When all the other stuff melts away, God will reward us based on that. He goes on. As she watched the silversmith, he, silversmith, he held a piece of silver over the fire and let it heat up. He explained that one needs to hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flames are the hottest to burn away impurities. The woman thought about God holding us in such a spot. She then thought again about the verse that he sits as a refiner of silver, a refiner and purifier of silver. She asked the smith, if it was true that he had to sit there in front of the fire the whole time the silver was being refined. The man answered, yes, not only do I have to sit here holding the silver, but I have to keep my eyes on the silver the entire time it's in the fire. If I left it even for a moment in the flames, it would be destroyed. You're crying out, God does not care about me. God does not love me. God does not see me. And what God is telling you this morning is every single moment his eyes are fixed on you. He's looking to see the reaction to the flame. You know that there are a lot of people that say, get me out of here, God. God thinks you're ready for it. But you're trying to say, I'm not ready for it. Get me out of here, God. It's not pleasant, right? But God's put us there, and he knows we're ready. But sometimes we don't submit to the Lord. And we say, God, I will not submit to that. You promised to bless me. You promised to only do good things to me. You promised to be this perfect father who only loves me and nothing bad ever happens in my life. That's not the Bible I'm reading this morning. All right, that's some picture book that you bought somewhere that doesn't have the whole Bible in it. The God that I love loves me so much, he purifies my faith. He wants me to be useful. He wants me to be useful for him. The woman sat silent for a moment. Then she asked the silversmith, how do you know when the silver is fully refined by the fire? And he smiled at her and answered. This is your God speaking to you this morning. It's very easy. When I see my perfect image in the reflection, it's ready. Do you know that if the image is distort, distorted in any way, it hasn't been refined enough? And what God's trying to do is he's trying to make you a perfect reflection 
of him. You say, well, wait a minute, man. I'm so confident in myself. I'm so confident in my intelligence. I'm so confident in my ability to take the world by the horns and just control everything. And God's saying, that's the problem. That's the problem. You're not humble. You have no humility. You've never failed enough, (laughs) okay, because you're so confident in your intelligence that God is saying you have no humility, you have no, you're not humble in any way. How in the world can God use you to reach the world when you are so puffed up and so intelligent? When you are so big and you are so mighty and you are so great, how in the world can you ever reflect the image of Jesus Christ to this world? And what God is wanting to do is he wants to humble his church. You say, but I want to be a star. I want to be a star. I want them to flock around me. God's kingdom doesn't work that way. He gives power to those who are humble. Why? Because you would destroy yourself if you didn't. If God lets you stay puffed up, if God lets you stay proud, if God lets you stay um, all of those things, you would never do a thing for God. You would hurt the kingdom so terribly that we would never recover. But God loves us enough to work out impurities in our life. And sometimes that doesn't feel good, and sometimes that's not popular to preach. But he does it. Six steps to purifying your faith based on how they do it with gold. All right? Now I want you to get these steps. They're going to preach themselves, though. But I'll be here for dialogue. (laughs) Number one, the refiner must break up the natural ore. In biblical times, a refiner broke up what was called a rough ore, a hardened rock that was encased with common minerals such as copper, tin, zinc, but rock, but it also had the promise of valuable rare metals that were hidden within. The precious metals were gold and silver. The breaking of the rock was necessary to begin the refining process and expose highly valuable metals to heat. Wow. So we have this massive rock, dynamite. Sometimes they have to do it to remove chunks of rock with dynamite. There's different excavating ways they can get it, but they got a solid piece of rock with a lot of potential. How many know that you are that stubborn rock? You are a rough, stubborn piece of ore. And do not look at your neighbor. That is very cruel when you look at your neighbor with knowing eyes, all right? Do not do it. Look straight ahead. Avoid the temptation. Because you're rough, too, all right? But you're you're this massive piece of stone that has all this potential. Now, understand, inside this stone is a lot of valuable things that can be used. Copper, tin, all these different things that can be used in this rock, but they're not precious. All that stuff has to be removed to get to that thing which is the most precious that we want to get, the thing that's the most valuable, the thing that's of the most worth that's inside. And God is looking at us and He's saying, there's one thing that above all else is valuable inside of you, and that's your faith in Jesus Christ. That is your trust, because that faith in Jesus Christ, the Bible says... No man could ever see God without that faith. You know that. That's the one thing that's going to give you entrance into the kingdom of heaven. It's the one thing that can change the world around us is our faith in Jesus Christ. It is the gold. And the Bible says that the first thing God has to do, the first thing in this process is he must crush. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock into pieces? The first thing that he must do the initial step in the process is to pound, shatter, and crush the ore into a fine powder. 
the elements that make up the ore, dirt, rock, minerals, gold, whatever and unwanted materials remain, they are totally pulverized. God's chosen ore, because it has an unsuitable, an excessive amount of undesirable elements or dross. The first step in the refining process illustrates the humbling that we must undergo before God can work with us. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to them who have a broken heart, and He saves those who have a contrite spirit. And you say, well, man, what is this process? Is this the hard times you were talking about? This isn't the hard times. This is when a person first comes to God. And they say, God, I am this rough thing that the world doesn't believe has any value whatsoever. How many of you have ever felt that way? But God looks at you and says, man, you look valuable to me. Let me work on you. And the first thing we do is we humble ourselves before God. And I lay down my intelligence. You say, well, your hand, there's not very much in your hand there. No, I don't have a whole lot of it. (laughs) Don't mark me. I've had to live with that my whole life. But you lay down your intelligence. You lay down your opinions. You lay down all the ideals you had. You know what? I even laid down all my dreams that didn't go through God down. How many have ever been crushed by dreams? It's like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and you just get crushed. How many have ever been crushed by opinions, crushed by your intelligence, crushed by your self confidence? And what God's saying is, it's okay. Just lay it down. And He crushes. And all that potential just spreads out like powder. And he begins to collect the usable things. He's like, you know what? He's not real bright, but I've got some use for that intelligence. I've got some use for that creativity. I've got some use for that sense of humor. I've got some use for these things that are within you. And I'm going to use those things. But I've got bigger work that I want to do. And there's something inside of you that's bigger than all of these things. And, more, and, and, and it's more precious than everything that's within you. And I'm going to develop that. That's what I'm after. That. That's the most important thing. But these other things I can use. And then he begins to look around at the powdered dust. And he begins to say, there's a lot of things here that uh, we would term dross. The waste. And you know, there's a lot of things here that I just can't use. And you say, oh, but I love that. I mean, that's, it's like, God said, I can't use that. There's some things there that we just have to submit ourselves to God and say, God, if that's not right, I don't want it in my life. Why? Because it's going to take all your time. It's going to take all your energy. It's going to take all your attention. You say, but God, I love video games. Oh, no, he did it. <laughs> but God, I like, I like to hold on to hurt. And God's like, you know what? I want to heal that. Why? Because I've got plans for you. I've got purposes for you. And I can't take you where I want you to go if you're still hurt from when you were six years old. When you were 10 years old. When you were 12 years old. Your last marriage. Whatever it is. I can't. We got to move on from that. I've got big plans for you. I've got big purposes for you. And God begins to remove dross. Why? Because he has big plans for you. He has a purpose. He's watching intently over your life. The next thing he does, he begins to gather these elements 
that includes some valuable things and includes some not valuable things and includes some dross. And he begins to fashion a vessel, and that vessel is called a crucible. The refiner puts broken, crushed ore into a crucible. It is a fireproof melting pot that withstands heat. Then the refiner places the crucible into the furnace at a very precise temperature necessary for removing other metals that would mar the quality of the gold or the silver. Just as the furnace is used to purify silver in the crucible, our refiner uses heat to purify our hearts and cleanse our character. So do you see how measured this is? Thank you. Must look bad. Do you see what's happening here? Very precise. He puts you in there. The temperature is exact. Because if it's not exact, it won't remove what he wants to remove. He's not throwing this away. He's purifying it. He's trying to get out something very specific. And you say, well, how in the world does he plan on getting rid of my pride? He's precise. There are certain things that will remove your pride. And I say, Lord, do it. I don't want that pride. But you know, another one says, I love my pride. Yesterday, there was a lot of people that loved their pride in Virginia, and it was white pride white nationalists, and there were deaths. And there are those that are hold on to their black pride and their white pride and their Native American pride. But you know what I say? I don't want hate in my heart, Lord. Take my pride. Take it all away. Whatever you have to do, Lord, you're the silversmith. I'm in the fire. And Lord has a way. How many have ever had pride removed where it wasn't a problem anymore? You say, man, you know what? I didn't like what I went through, but I'm so much more humble now than I was before that. But you still wouldn't go back and make yourself go through that again, would you? But this is what he does. He's specific with the temperatures. And then after it's there for the exact amount of time at the exact temperature, he knows it. He pulls it out. He removes the dross. So God is very measured. He knows what time in your life. It says, I won't give you anything more than you can handle. He pulls you out. And man, there goes some of the pride. There goes some of that self-confidence that, you know, is a, that exalts itself way above God. There goes some of that logic that exalts itself above God. And man, this humble person comes back and says, Lord, I can't believe I was like that before. Have you ever look back in your life and say, man, I was so arrogant. I was so proud. I really thought I was so wonderful. And it's not that you feel less about yourself. It's like, God, you made me a better person. You made me care about people that I normally would not care about. You made me love in a way that I normally would not love. You made me care in ways I never thought I could care. And you say, well, I'm already very caring. You're caring to specific people. You're caring to specific things, but there's more. There's a gold of a quality that you don't know about. I said that kind of like a pirate. There's a gold. That's all right. <clears throat> so anyway, he pulls the stage two is the dross removal. Then he comes back and you say, well, what can he do possibly next? There are stages of heat. Did you know that? That's how you get from your. 14 karat gold to your 24 karat gold to the highest quality gold you can possibly have. There are specific numbers of heat that remove specific things as he moves on. So he puts them back in the fire. Once he's removed the dross and pulled them out and they've recovered, he allows them to go back in and then the temperature goes a little higher. And man, these things start bubbling up. Dross begins to come up again. And certain things can only be removed at the next threshold. And you know that sometimes they'll put it in there up to seven times. And each time the master 
will pull off things that you never thought could be removed. And you say, man, I don't know if I want that. Folks, he's taking you to a place of abundance. We can trust him. You say, well, I want to be like the world. They don't ever have problems. We all have problems. The only difference is we're measured. We're measured and we're being watched very carefully. And God's put us in a process where there's a purpose It says, all things work to the good for those who love the Lord and are called by His name. And we're in a process. And every time we go in, something's being removed. You say, well, I don't know what's going on right now at my work. I'm really stressed. Something is happening in your heart. Something is happening to the quality of that faith. My desire is that faith gets pure. I don't want it to burn up. I don't want to be the guy that says, God, I trusted you and you did this. I want to be the one that understands this word, that God will purify my heart, and I will be a person that people will look at and say, that's God's man right there. Did you ever notice that the temple of God, he made him make everything gold of the highest quality you ever notice that in fact you go in I made a little note of that somewhere you go in in the tabernacle in ancient Israel the tabernacle the ark of the covenant was overlaid with gold The staffs to carry it were covered in gold. The mercy seat and the cherubims that covered it were in gold. The table of showbread was covered in gold. The dishes, the spoons, the bowls were pure gold. The candlesticks, the tongs, the snuffer, outers, they all were made of gold. Everything in the tabernacle furniture was made of gold. Now why would God do that? He could have just said the altar or, you know, the table of showbread. You wouldn't have had to say the golden table of showbread. You know, you wouldn't have to say the golden altar. You wouldn't have to say the golden cherubim. But he, all this money, I mean, you know how much money David donated in gold to make that? God is trying to send us a message. God's trying to tell us, you know, gold, you can find it thousands of years later, and it doesn't, tarnish like silver does it's still shining it still endures the test of time it still has it still shines when you look at it and what God's saying is my servants you're made of gold everything in my service everything in my tabernacle everything in my presence is gold and that's why I'm making you and refining you and making you of the high quality because I'm building my temple and my presence I'm building my church and they're all people that have been tried and tested and they've stood the test of time and they're with me through through high waters he said through fire through everything they're with me they will not turn their back on me they've been tried they've been tested they've been purified and I'm coming back for my bride that is just like that they have not turned their back on me they're still with their hands up They're saying, I've been through everything, man. You don't know what I've been through, but your hands are still up. You're still in God's house. You're still worshiping His holy name. You still say, I love you, Lord. You still say, Lord, my life is yours. And He's saying, that's my bride. That's who sits in my presence. That's who can ascend the holy hill of God. Is that person that is that is precious the crucible the dross the heat the purification each time with the utmost skill and patience the refiner removes the dross leaving behind shining gold and shimmering silver more pure and more precious than before. To gauge his progress, the refiner looks for his own reflection on the surface of the silver-filled crucible. 
The more dross removed, the less distorted his reflection. The Bible says that God sits in the refining process. It says in Job 23.10, Job had been through all these things, and he said, He knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as pure gold. He just keeps looking, and they keep getting better. Keeps looking, and they keep getting better. Now, shouldn't they be getting worse? Shouldn't they be more angry? Shouldn't they be more bitter? Shouldn't they be more um, shaking their fist at God? That's the one that doesn't involve themselves in the purifying process. God wants us to be allow ourselves to be purified. God wants us to allow ourselves. And he, did you notice it said some will survive? but then some will be purified by the fire. It's talking about the judgment seat of Christ. It's talking about the reward for continuing to love Him, continuing to serve Him, continuing to hold on to Him, even though we've gone through great trials and tribulations. And then the reflection, stage six. Only when He finally looks in the crucible and sees a clear reflection of Himself is the process complete. Finally, the silver attains its highest degree of purity, and that describes his loving intentions for us in the furnace. As we trust him to use our trials to cleanse our character and purify our hearts, we will begin to see the silver lining. Isaiah 48.10, See, I have refined you. Though not as silver, I have tested you with a furnace. Listen to this poem. Everybody would stand to their feet. Worship team. It says, He sat by a furnace of sevenfold heat as he watched at the precious ore. The closer he bent with a searching gaze as he heated it more and more. He knew he had ore that would stand the test, and he wanted the finest gold to build as a crown for my king to wear, set with gems of price untold. So we laid our gold in the burning fire, though we faint and sometimes we say no. We watched the dross that we had not seen as it melted and passed away. The gold grew brighter and got more bright, but our eyes were dim with tears. We saw only the fire, not the master's hand, and questioned with anxious fears. Yet our gold shone out with a richer glow as it mirrored its form above, then bent over the fire though when seen by us with a look, an ineffable love. You see the master watching it above? We don't see him, though, sometimes. Can we think it pleases his loving heart to cause us moments of pain? Think about that. Do we think that it pleases his loving heart to cause us moments of pain? Do you think it hurt him when Jesus was on the cross? Do you think it caused him pain? Oh no, but he sees through the present cross the bliss of eternal gain. You tell me, what's better for you? Is it better for you to avoid the pain of affliction? Or is it better for you to be eternally better? And God wants you eternally to be better. If he let us alone with the dross, what would we do? If we were left alone with all of the dross and the pain and the self-confidence and all the things that keep us away from faith in God, would we be better or would we be worse? And the loving eyes of God watches this process because it's necessary. So we waited there with a watchful eye, with a love that is strong and sure. And his gold did not suffer a bit more heat than was needed to make it pure. 
Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord.